The House of Small Comfort. Magdalene's is the closest thing many Skyfarers have to a home. It offers services to alleviate the strain of a life spent too close to the stars. Oh, right. Yeah, I remember hearing this is a place where you can, like, confess your secrets and seek solace and things like that. Uh, well, before we do anything, let's go ahead and get rid of our seeds. Small profit, but it's something. The amenable host smiles. Just what we needed. Although I must admit, I do miss roses. And lilies. And bluebells. Still, these celestial blooms have their own virtues. Some of them weep, you know. He pays you a generous gratuity. Oh. They even sell more sacks of verdant seeds as a bargain. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear one of my cats, like, making loud snoring noises in the background. If you can, I'm not even sorry, because it's adorable. Beatrice's Exchange. You know, one thing I think I've been completely missing is that each store, like Beatrice's Exchange or anything else, has its own unique little description. Um, yeah, the bazaar doesn't. But any, like, named place other than the bazaar seems to have its own description. An elderly proprietor with a steely gleam in her eye runs this trading post. She deals in engine supplies from the jumbled shop floor and an unwanted souls in a smoky back room. House of Small Comfort. Enter. Or treat your nightmares. Uh, oh right, I don't have any nightmares ever since I took this. Yeah, the Thief Oath. Treat your terror. Don't need to do that at the moment, but yeah, this is a place for nightmares and, and terror. What if I do these... Anyway, like, what, what do they cost? Let's poke around. The skies are full of terrible wonders. All skyfarers see more than they should when they sail the sunless sky. The sound of soft laughter and the... Occasional sob echo through the stained glass walls of the treatment chambers. An attendant sits guard before the door. I just need to ask for the particulars. We will always alleviate your fears, but the method is at your discretion. All treatments will lower your terror equally. Provides a unique encounter and lowers your terror for a savage secret. I have 20 of those. For guilt, same thing. Unique encounter and all that. Gossip, Specimen, or Vision of Heaven. Interesting. I wonder what the unique encounter is. Might be worth it to do these even if I don't care to lower my terror, which I obviously don't because I'm at zero. I'll come back to that. Let's look about treating my nightmares. For some cases of sleepless nights lost in formless terror, of persistent night terrors in a elusive dreams, more severe treatments are required. In these somber chambers of red and gold painted glass, when the worst failings of the heart are treated, an attendant waits, waits to take your details and your payment. He asks only that you request the name of the person you wish to treat you. Here you can reduce your nightmares before they get worse. The more you use these treatments, the more expensive they will become. The attendants can only do so much. You need... wait. You need zero moments of inspiration for this? What? These are strange, so to start off with, they seem basically free. Of course, you need to actually have a nightmare of some sort to use them, but... Yeah, they don't seem to have a cost. Yet. Let's enter the House of Small Comfort. The glass spires of Magdalene's pierce the clouds like swords. Shadowed figures can be seen moving through the gleaming corridors, their identities obscured by the hued glass. Crowds of skyfarers, ministry officials, and merchants mill about the forecourt, in varying degrees of distress. All watch the clock set in the great clock tower, waiting for their appointed hour. Oh, that's what I'm hearing. Where is the clock tower? Have I seen it? Is it 
huge, like on a separate island right next to this place. Oh, right! Like a million years ago, I... I uh, took the Sky Madden captain after I destroyed their ship, I think. And then said I would take him to Magdalene's for treatment. Yeah, alright, you rescued him from a defeated marauder. Here, he can get help. The nurses bring a stretcher to carry the Sky Madden captain from your train. You receive the care of Magdalene's finest. At least Magdalene's finest with a sense of clarity, given that he has nothing on him to pay for their ministrations. Vision of Heaven, Terrid and Change, and 100 Experience. Amenable Host, speak with an attendant or write a port report. Let's get a port report. Magdalene's is a popular destination, so we'll no doubt be interested in how things are here and who has been seen here. Magdalene's is abuzz with activity. Barely has a clock chimed, then a clamor goes up at the front desk. Guests rushing to and from appointments. Lord something was seen in conversation with the amenable host. The east wing was closed for general access all day. A certain distinguished admiral was seen with his second-in-command entering one of the chambers of regret. Several guests succumbed to an excess of sentimentality and were forcibly removed. Let's go to our meeting with the amenable host. Wait, why do we have a meeting with the amenable host? The founder and master of ceremonies at Magdalene's, he has requested you by name. Is this a thing that I've forgotten about? An attendant escorts you through the dazzling violet corridors. The host's red door is always open. The attendant leaves you just as the clock begins to chime. The amenable host reclines on a couch of crushed velvet, a goblet of sparkling wine in his long fingers. Somewhere in the tower above him, the great clock ticks away. As a policy, the host's atrium is always open to guests. He is available to hear opinions, friendly criticism, and suggestions. Today, he has a headache. Listen to the amenable host's request. He beckons you close. His voice is soft and sibilant, like butter melting in candlelight. A guest has become rather too attached to a particular attendant. He always requests that the same attendant appear in the exact same guise. The amenable host's lip curls in distaste. He reiterates the aim of Magdalene's, a place of healing and respite. It was not meant to feed obsession or self-indulgent self-loathing. This guest brings sickness. I would have him purged. I have a dossier on our guest if you're interested in helping. Okay, what do you mean purged? Do you want me to kill them or something? Take the Lacrimos Guest's Dossier. Which I had to just look up because I have no idea what Lacrimos means, or at least I didn't until just now. Lacrimos means tearful or given to weeping. Synonyms tearful, weeping, crying, teary, sobbing, sniveling, whimpering. Yeah. The amenable host has requested help in removing a customer who is blurring the boundaries of healer and patient. The amenable host smiles indulgently. I'm so glad you want to help. He produces a thin sliver of pages and passes them to you. I'd recommend taking on the role of one of our attendants. That way you'd be playing the role of someone significant to him. The amenable host sighs, reaching for his goblet. He knows all of our attendants by voice now. Someone new is needed. I don't understand why they need my help. Why can't they just go to them and say, Hey, leave. You're not welcome here anymore. Uh, so I guess I should speak with an attendant? Oh, or we can just deal with the Lacrimos guest right now. Mm. Let's speak with an attendant first. The staff at Magdalene's promised treatments for the deleterious effects of the High Wilderness. Loneliness, desperation, folly, regret, love. An attendant in the foyer schedules appointments with the aid of a hefty daybook and a very accurate clock. They're eager to explain the procedures and the rules that govern here. This is a hospital for the spirit. Our staff will become the person you need. Here you may say farewell to a doomed comrade. 
Resurrect an old love, spar with a defeated enemy. Offer a fair price, but do not overindulge. Our services are to heal, not to become an addiction. A tomb colonist is visiting a friend. Attendants draw lots to see who has to dom the bandages this time. <laughs> I remember one of the early quests in Sunless Seas was to deliver tomb colonists, I think. I forgot exactly what they were, but I think they were undead or something like that. Uh, hmm. Well, something new is now here after talking with the attendants. Let's talk to patients being discharged. They exit the treatment chambers, fresh from their encounters with attendants in the guise of their most personal memories. A harassed captain waits by the steps for his crew to emerge one by one from the chambers below. Ichi grabs by the ear and leads to a quiet antechamber. The shouting can be heard from here. If you had complaints about my captaining, you could have just told me directly. Not some ruddy actor. Okay, so that's always the same now? No, it looks like it's different. Some leave smiling, others weeping. No one can resist looking back behind them, even for just a peek. The clock sounds. Visitors scurry through the forecourt to their appointments. Oh, now we can observe guests going in for treatment. Okay. Am I just hanging around like a creeper, just watching these people all day? A trio of guests is going in together. All dark-haired and straight-backed. Yes, I know it's not the real thing. But I'd like a sense of closure, the tall woman says. What rot? Barks the short woman next to her. You want to argue over the will again. I've told you once, I am not giving up the spoons based on a charlatan say-so. Do be quiet, please, the one man says. I, for one, am more than happy to hear again why I was lumbered with a third best wardrobe. <laughs> what? What a bunch of petty crap. The scream of a boiling kettle. The attendants are on break. Okay, there must be a point to this. The attendants are on break. Maybe I need to enter when the attendants are on break. I don't know, because I haven't even tried to deal with the lacrimose guest. Let's do that. He stands on the threshold of the treatment chambers, his hands trembling. The attendants on duty have been briefed as your involvement. How do you plan to deal with him? A treatment chamber has been emptied for you, should you wish to adopt a guise from his past. Alternately, he's stood right there. He does not seem to have noticed you, his eyes instead boring through the doors of the treatment rooms. Approach directly, disguise as their mother or his lover. Hmm. Well, let's just go directly, to begin with. Disguises have caused the poor sod enough trouble. The lacrimose guest's eyes widen as you approach. Ha has, has there been a problem? You invite him to sit. Stiff brandies are ordered. You recount your own share of heartbreaks and tragedies, how you found yourself here, and you make clear that despite all that, you will be leaving. He nods slowly and, after a quick shake of your hand, walks away toward the station. He does not look back. Was that it? Well, that was easy. Let's return to the amenable host. That's the same, that's the same, yeah, that's all the same. Let the amenable host know the lacrimose guest is gone. For better or worse, he will not be returning to Magdalene's. Definitely had to look up that one. Beatifically. The amenable host smiles beatifically. That means... Feeling or expressing blissful happiness. Synonyms rapturous, joyful, ecstatic, blissful, serene, happy, beaming, glad. I just wasn't sure how to pronounce it. Beatific, beatifically. The mental host smiles beatifically. Of course, my staff will be pleased. It is a risk of our trade when our clients can no longer separate identity and illusion, but seldom pleasant. He sighs deeply echoing around the chamber like a newly freed dove. It is a trap any of us could fall into. His face darkens briefly. Here, take this. He fishes around beneath his couch for one of his goblets. It'll fetch a pretty price. 
take it with my thanks and do visit us again. Wait, I'm sorry, he fishes around beneath his couch for one of his goblets? What, like a goblet that had rolled under his couch? Or is there some sort of storage compartment for goblets in, in their couch? I'm just imagining an old goblet still, still like sticky with some wine or whatever that was in it with a bunch of lint stuck to it. <laughs> Hundred sovereigns. You've done the amenable host a significant favor. Yeah, um, I feel like there's got to be more to do here. Let's return to the host. Anything more? They have another request. He's melancholy today, not to mention irritable. He has a job for you, he says. Voice rich with unhappiness. I admired your discretion earlier, he sighs. You've seen the dangers of our work upon those who abuse our service. Yet, we are not immune to it ourselves. He draws your attention to several paintings on the walls. My regulars have, at various points, requested that I be a prospector on Lustrum, heir to a fine house in Port Prosper, and a titan of industry on New Winchester. Very specific requests. And more, I have, a, I have vivid memories of being all three. Yet, all cannot be true, surely. He presses a locket into your hand. This bears my image. See if anyone remembers me. I can't remember who I was before this. If I could be other than I am, I'd like to know. Wait, what? The amenable host wishes you to recover his identity. Travel to any of Lustrum, New Winchester, and Port Prosper to begin. Wait, let me read this again. Um, we're not immune to it ourselves. So, I guess changing I uh, we've seen the dangers of our work upon those who abuse our service, yet are, yet we are not immune to it ourselves. So it sounds like assume, assuming so many different identities, being so many different people, has caused, has caused them to forget who they were? They don't even know who they were anymore? Uh, my regulars have requested that I be a prospector in Lustrum, heir to a fine house. Um, I have vivid memories of being all three, yet all cannot be true. Okay. Yeah, they've forgotten who they were because they've been so many different people. Strange. Interesting. Yeah, I'd be glad to. I'd also like to know where I can get some stained glass, because this definitely seems like the stained glass place. I mean, this icon here, behind where my mouse is, is literally the image for the item stained glass. Well, I guess I might as well buy as many seeds as I can, since they're a bargain. Maybe I should try to treat my terror that doesn't exist, just to see what the unique encounters are. I'll do that for the Savage Secret, because I have 20 of those. He smiles, the practiced smile of an old friend offering comfort for their comrades' predictable misdeeds. That's my specialty, when I'm on duty in the chambers. He begins to hum the tune of a popular ballad of a signaler failing, a falling from his locomotive unnoticed by his captain and drifting cold in the dark. This way, do keep up. Oh, and this was a treatment for loneliness. The attendant holds up a candle before four doors of mirrored glass. Four of our staff are available today. Each has their own specialty. Their names are not yours to know, only their craft. He smiles suddenly, his teeth gleaming like links on a chain. You know yourself best. Who can tend your wounded heart? Whoever you need, you can find behind one of these doors. Someone from your past. A very boring individual indeed. Someone who once meant a very great deal, or a former crewman. Hmm. I'm going to say a former crewman, because Elizabeth has lost quite a few crew members to all sorts of things, like a, a bee sting trying to get Corister Nectar, or I mean, what have you, so many different ways, and horribly, our crew have died. Her eyes light up as you enter the room. 
It looks just like a bunk on your engine. She's laid out the tea just how you liked it. When did you lose her again? Was it an accident? Did you part ways in the Isambard line? You can't remember. But she's good enough not to mention it. Instead, she talks of former times, of old friends remembered, older jokes shared. It's only hours after all that that you remember what happened to her. Seems like that's all I can do here at the moment. I feel like exploring some more. So let's go ahead and buy as many supplies as I can. I've got three slots. Do I get one more fuel or one more supplies is a question. Let's get one more fuel. I think I'm going to go... Well, either this way or this way. Let's, let's keep going this way. See what's down here. I also want to find this clock tower. It sounds so large. I imagine it's just... Oh. Wait, it sounds... It's directional. It sounds like it's coming from this way. Where is it? It sounds like it's coming from everywhere. getting louder and louder and louder. Maybe this whole thing that seems up above everything else, maybe the clock's on that? I can't actually see the clock, though. Oh, it sounds like it's coming from the right. It's coming from all over. Weird. It's coming from everywhere, it sounds like. Huh. Oh, looks like we can go down that way. Eh, let's go down this way. Oh, hello. Contankery. Contankery have, have buried into the mossy walls. Your signaler orders double shifts on watch. Yeah, there's a bunch here. I guess I'll just leave them alone unless they get in my way. Whoa, are those moving? I've never seen those moving before. Might have to take you out. You're right where that question mark is. Damn, I thought I would kill it in one hit. many of them. Uncanny specimen, lose terror. Well, terror is really not a problem. Let's look for an uncanny specimen. 98% chance of success. Find a stony organ still palpitating with stubborn life. Ah, oh, this one's still kind of alive. Let's listen to its last complaint. I think this description is new, even though we've read this before. It grumbles at length and no apparent discomfort until its abrupt final silence. I heard, says a solemn junior signaler, that when their world was dying, they didn't fix it or try to leave. They just burrowed into its crust and slept until the end. They crumbled around them, and they woke amongst its fragments. That's sad. Wow, they really have a tendency to explode themselves by bashing up against a rock. Listen to his last complaint. It booms like a cracked foghorn as if death were yet another worrisome indignity it was forced to tolerate. They gather in old places, a stoker says, and make those noises at each other, like they're planning something or telling stories. An engineer shakes her head. They only have one story, and it's about how everything's terrible now. Ooh, 
Ooh, snow covered. Are we getting into a snowy region down here? Unseasoned hours. Ooh, right on the edge. Let's go. That's one of those food things that I can't do. What is... What is that? It looks like the Isambard line kind of thing. Is that one of those... Whatever they're called? Stations? Uh, how do I explore? Addison Wick. Investigate. There it is. The signal box has been blasted by weapon fire. Despite the holes, the shattered tiles, the fractured beams, it still has enough structural integrity for you to climb inside without risk. It was made with care and pride. Inside, beneath a desk covered with rusted levers, is a luggage trunk. Captain St. Dire Need can borrow from the cash inside, but custom dictates he must let it replenish it. Oh, so I get. I think this is the same description as the Isambard line thing. The uh, what was it called? Something comb, cuddles comb. Where I got my uh, one officer from? This something signalman. Oh, I can't do this yet. More time has passed before there'll be any new entries. Huh, that's weird. So this this timer on like how long before he can read the ledger is a universal timer that applies to all of these things. Because obviously I haven't read this one at all, but I did recently read Cuddlescomb. Well, nothing to do then. Oops. Oh, Scriver. Whoa. Oh, I've got to say it. I wish I could. It looks so cool. Oops, went the wrong way. I was about to try to get close to it, but then I remember they have that area of effect thing.
come on, you're splurting. There we go. Whew. Oh, right, they have bronze wood. Or work over sheaves of parchment. If I remember right, you get a pretty good amount of experience, like 250 or something. Let's do that. Yeah, 250. Yeah, this place up here looks so cool. I've never seen ruins or whatever these are that look like this. Broken habitation, long abandoned. Oh, it's got some gears in it and stuff. It looks like a... It looks like a piece that broke off from like a greater machine slash habitation thing. It's fascinating. And so out of place, like why is it here? There's nothing else that looks like it around. This might actually lead up to Port Prosper. Homestead. Whoops. Cold and silent. And search it. 44 sovereigns. Settlers bury their valuables here, presumably intending to return. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. There's something sucking me in there. What could it be? Surely the peacock winds aren't over here. I thought those are only around the nature reserve. What is that? Okay. Uh, oh, oh, oh no. Oh no. Can I even fight against that? I don't even see the wind. And... Wait, that's not where I just came from, right? Isn't it? Yeah, that's not a new one. Hmm. Now, is it sucking me into the wall? Yeah, it's like sucking me into the wall. What the hell? Peacock wind buffets the engine. The unconscious driver whistles to a jolly tune. It is the peacock wind. It doesn't only show up around the reserve. Oh, that's trying to blow us out of the world, basically, right? Oh, no. No, that's also cut off there. Hey, buddy. Really? Come on, we both have bigger problems. Oh, no, that's a bull one. Oh! Shit. Oh my god, there's too much happening here. Damn it, I went right into that. Mad Mercy's claim. Hmm. Wow, there's a lot of lips here. A lot of things to crave. Mm. Damn, that still hurt.
No, 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 no. I am extremely low. L Let's go up to Port Prosper. I'm ignoring you. You're close to dead, but I don't care. Yeah, another clock clockwork one. Oh, please tell me there's a way through. Uh-oh, there might not be. Ooh, actually, the Scriver might be coming for me. Damn it. And if it is, then this will make pretty good cover. Peek out, shoot it. Oh, that's a bull cantankery. Scriver doesn't seem to be coming for me. Oh, there is a way through. Thank God. Hey, you made it out, Tackety. I'm assuming you're the same one. Ah, <sighs> poor Prosper. I mean, I can't repair here, but at least it's safe. Ooh, there's actually quite a bit new at Port Prosper, more than I thought. Which I think means this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to check out Port Prosper, which includes things like the other company house. Because the company's fortunes decline in New Winchester, they withdrew to Port Prosper. So they're here now. Uh, there's maybe new settlers to transport, it looks like. If we explore Port Prosper, we can search for the amenable host's identity and take a factory tour. So all sorts of cool new stuff. So hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.